This is the Canon R8, a 455 gram full frame camera that costs only $1,500. Big thanks to my friend Pascal here, who is now filming me for allowing me to play around with this camera. I'll leave a link to his channel down below. Anyhow, I'm going to play with this camera for the next 48 hours to see how it compares to my Sony ZV-E1. In addition, I'll be talking from a perspective of a YouTuber slash content creator because that's what I do with my cameras. With that said, let's start. So the first thing you notice when you hold a new camera in your hands is the ergonomics. And I must say that the ergonomics on the R8 feel far better than on the ZV-E1. The R8 feels more solid and it's simply more comfortable to hold in one hand, especially with a heavy lens. In terms of weight and ports, they're almost identical. The R8 weighs 455 grams, while the ZV-E1 weighs 482 grams. Both have a USB-C, micro HDMI, a headphone and a microphone jack, and the R8 also has a remote control jack. So the R8 is slightly lighter with a remote control jack that I never use. However, one annoying feature about the R8 is that when you plug in an external microphone, the cable will block a good portion of the display and will also get in the way when you move the screen around. It's not a big deal, but I wish the mic port was on top like on the Sony ZV-E1. Moving on, the R8 has a viewfinder, while the ZV-E1 does not. That doesn't bother me because when I had the a7 IV, I barely ever used the viewfinder. However, if you're into photography or like using the viewfinder, then it's a plus for you on the R8. When it comes to buttons and dials, the R8 has 15 buttons, three dials, and a photo video switch. Nine of the 15 buttons can be customized for video, and there are shutter, aperture, and mode dials. Whereas the ZV-E1 has 13 buttons, two dials, and a photo video slash SNQ switch, you can only customize eight of them, and there are only shutter and aperture dials. The buttons on both feel very similar. Perhaps the ZV-E1 has slightly higher quality buttons. However, I don't like the placement of the AF on and menu buttons on the R8. The menu button cannot be reached with the right hand and I believe the AF on button should have been a little more to the left. Also, I think the R8's record button is a little too small. But the R8 has a mode dial, whereas the ZV-E1 does not. A mode dial is extremely useful when switching between shooting modes and custom presets. Finally, the R8 has a small Canon LP E17 battery with a UHS-2 SD card slot in the battery compartment, whereas the ZV-E1 has a large Sony NPF-Z100 battery with the same UHS-2 SD card slot, but it's on the side of the camera. Unfortunately, Canon didn't use their bigger LPE6N battery on the R8. I'm guessing they put the smaller battery to save money. So because the ZV-E1 has a larger battery capacity, I expect it to perform much better in terms of battery life. Okay, I'm going to walk around with the camera, shoot some stuff and also run stabilization and autofocus tests, come back home, review the footage and share my thoughts with you. So I am back in my studio. I've been comparing the video quality, stabilization and autofocus on the Canon R8 to the ZV-E1 for the last two days. And I have some thoughts. Let's start with video features and video quality. The Canon R8 has a 24 megapixel sensor and can shoot at up to 60 frames per second in 4K over sampled from 6K with no crop or 1080p at up to 180 frames per second. It also supports C-Log trim and 10-bit video as well as APS-C crop mode. The Sony ZV-E1 on the other hand has a 12 megapixel sensor and can currently shoot in 4K at up to 60 frames per second. A former update for 120 frames per second should be available soon. It can also shoot in 1080p at up to 120 frames per second. It also supports S-Log trim, 10-bit video, cinematic vlog mode, framing stabilizer, the ability to import and preview LUTs, and clear image zoom with autofocus. So the video features on these cameras are are very similar except for the megapixel count on the sensor, slow motion in 1080p and 4K and also the cool vlogging features on the Sony ZV-E1. However, when I put both cameras side by side, I much prefer the video quality on the ZV-E1. Based on my comparisons, the ZV-E1 has at least an extra stop of dynamic range and less noise in the shadows. I'm not sure why, but most of the footage I captured with the Canon R8 was quite noisy, especially in the shadows but it was probably my fault because I'm really new to C-Log trim, so I was probably 
underexposing the footage or something like that, but I still prefer the image quality on the Sony ZV-E1. However, one thing I liked about the Canon R8 was the skin tones that came out of camera. The skin tones on the ZV-E1 are very green and yellow, whereas they appear more pinkish and natural on the Canon R8. But with some minor post-processing in Final Cut Pro, I can make the skin tones on the ZV-E1 look just as good. So long story short, I much prefer the image quality on the Sony ZV-E1 one but it's really hard to judge a camera after only using it for like two days i'm sure if i had more time with the canon r8 i could have improved the footage even more regardless i prefer the image quality on the sony zve one let's move on to autofocus and stabilization the canon r8 supports the latest dual pixel 2 autofocus technology and based on my tests it is just as good and reliable as sony sony may be slightly superior however i would have been completely satisfied with the canon r8 autofocus performance but i still think the zve one wins here because of the new cool ai autofocus features such as body tracking and also i think insect tracking Finally, let's move on to stabilization. The Canon R8 does not have in-body image stabilization, whereas the ZV-E1 does. However, despite not having IBIS, I was really impressed by the R8's stabilization performance. When using only the lens stabilization on the R8 versus standard steady shot on the ZV-E1, as far as I can tell, they both perform identically. When using the lens with normal electronic stabilization on the R8 versus active steady shot on the ZV-E1, in my opinion, the ZV-E1 is a bit more stable, but I'm might be wrong. Finally, when comparing lens and enhanced electronic stabilization on the R8 versus dynamic stabilization on the ZV-E1, both look similar, but I think the ZV-E1 is slightly more stable. However, please take these results with a grain of salt because I ran these tests in a hurry, but I still think that the ZV-E1 performs better in terms of stabilization, and it should because it has IBIS. To be honest, I think the R8 has excellent stabilization performance considering that it doesn't have IBIS. To to summarize, I think that the Canon R8 is an excellent camera. You get 4K 60 video, C-Log 3 10-bit video, an excellent grip and build quality, the same sensor as the more expensive Canon R6 Mark II, great skin tones out of camera, excellent digital stabilization performance, a viewfinder and a mode dial. However, I don't like the small battery, the poor RF lens selection, the narrower dynamic range compared to the Sony ZV-E1, the noise in the shadows and the camera removing settings from the screen when recording. That was one of the first things I noticed on the Canon R8 for whatever reason when you press the record button. If you have a grid or a level on the screen for example, they will completely go away after you start recording with the camera. I don't understand why Canon did it this way, but in my opinion, it's really dumb. But the ZV-E1 is not without flaws. I don't like the grip, display quality, out of camera colors compared to the R8, and the lack of a mode dial and mechanical shutter for photography. For me though, the ZV-E1 is pretty much perfect. I was actually a bit scared when I sold my A7 IV for the ZV-E1. I was thinking that I will miss some features on the A7 IV. But after using the ZV-E1 for about a month now, I think, I'm really happy with this camera. I think actually a bit more happy with this camera than the A7 IV. I love the small size, the 4K60, the soon to come 4K 120, the lens selection, everything is fantastic on this camera for making YouTube videos. That's what I do with my cameras. And I think for making YouTube videos, the ZV-E1 is fantastic. Thanks for watching.